Today, the America Meditating Radio Show warmly welcomes author Don Joseph Goe, who managed the Department of Psychiatry at Stanford Medical School, directed a regional emergency medical system, and headed an institute that pioneered an approach to catastrophic life events. Don has worked with some of the most stressful situations on earth and with people facing terminal illness, parents struggling with the loss of a child, prisoners adjusting to a life sentence, and refugees of the genocidal war in Bosnia struggling with extreme post-traumatic stress. Just imagine going through those life stories, my friends. He directed a research team that built an integrated model that enables a human being to overcome adversity and still be able to flourish. The success of the model in helping people end stress in high-pressure workplaces like Cisco Systems and Wells Fargo Bank has been unprecedented. Don is the author of several books, including The End of Stress, Four Steps to Rewiring Your Brain, and he writes for the Huffington Post and has been featured on the Today Show, CNN, and NPR. And today we welcome Don to the America Meditating Radio Show. Don, thank you for the work you're doing. I'm just so touched by it all. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, because, you know, you hear about stories on the news, and you have only been an observer of some incredible traumatic life experiences. And even as I sit and I can sometimes observe it, and I go through little stresses and see what that does to me on a spiritual, emotional, physical level, what is it like when a person goes through the loss of a child or goes through a genocide, uh, what are some of the things that actually happens to them on a soul level? Could you share with us? Well, initially, you know, people are afraid. They feel that uh, they're powerless. They feel like life has checkmated them. They're, you know, trying to rally a feeling of faith to face the adversity that's in front of them. And they struggle because the fear overwhelms them. You know, it's sort of... Every time they take a step forward, it seems like the fear pushes them back five steps. And what gradually happens, if they get the right support, you know, loving support, a support that basically begins to elevate their consciousness, they begin to learn how to let go of fear. They begin to understand that in terms, you know, they, they certainly have a big problem to face, but the trouble underneath the problem is their fear. And when they get that and they begin to practice what what helps them successfully disempower that fear, quiet it down. They begin to come into a, a place of consciousness that empowers them, that empowers them in the moment, here and now, to choose their experience. And, you know, the experience that naturally arises when you let go of fear is peace. It begins mm-hmm. initially with a sense of relief because fear is so painful, but then that relief turns into a you know, a state of calm that right. as we surrender to it, expands and becomes this experience of peace. And in that experience of peace, all of the power of our brain, particularly higher brain function, begins to come online. It's prerequisite for the intelligent producing neural networks in our brain. And as that comes on, they begin to find ways of relating to their situation. They begin to see solutions where all they were was trapped in problems. And, and their life opens up, their heart opens up, they begin to be empowered by love. And at the end of that process, they often say that they wouldn't go back and trade their situation, that particularly people that I've worked with who are life threat, people with AIDS, with cancer, they say they wouldn't go back and exchange their sick body for a healthy body if it meant they were going to learn, lose this spiritual expansion that's happened for them. And then, of course, you know, in medical science, we know that spiritual expansion creates what's called the mind-body connection, actually promotes, you know, the biochemical environment that we call healing. Mm-hmm. You know, Mary Lou Henner once said, being in control of your life and having realistic expectations about your day-to-day challenges are the keys to stress management, which is perhaps the most important ingredient to living a happy, healthy, and a rewarding life. And one of the things that we have observed, I don't think there's one single human being on the planet that hasn't struggled with some element of fear or even of stress. And years ago, you experienced what you called a perfect storm of stress. How did you overcome that season, I shall say? Uh, Yeah, that was 30 years ago. I lost my job, and it was a job I'd spent 
you know, most of my young adult years firing toward. So it was quite a blow. And then nine days later, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and I was warned by the specialist to prepare myself for some serious neurological disabilities, you know, that were serious enough that they might mean that I would never work again. And I was married at the time with uh, four small children, so it was a devastating blow. And I had to wait six weeks for the surgery, and I spent the first two weeks terrified, abject terror. You know, every night was a dark night of the soul. I'd wake up at 3 a.m., you know, and go to the living room, stare out the window into the cold, dark night. The, the night looked like a black hole that was going to suck me and my family in. You know, I was afraid to my family, and I we were going to end up homeless. And then one fateful night, about two weeks into that, I reached a point where I questioned, you know, which was worse, the dire problems that could happen out there in the future, or the abject fear that, you know, had been happening in me every day, all day long. And it was clear to me at that moment the fear was worse. The fear was the pain. So I tried a process that I learned from the famous American psychologist Carl Rogers back when I worked with him. I became keenly aware of each fearful thought that I was thinking and the you know, strong emotion it carried, and horrible pictures it painted. I became really aware of that. I let awareness come in and show me what was going on in, you know, more vivid detail. And then I practiced not believing any of the thoughts that I was thinking. And my ego would come in and argue with me. It would say, you know, you can not believe this thought, but at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're, you're still in horrible trouble. And I w would practice not believing that thought. Any fearful thought that came up, I wouldn't believe. And then the part of the process is see what does your experience become when you don't believe a fearful thought. And gradually what happened, I began to calm down, you know, in the way that I was just talking about a moment ago. And about a half hour later, I was at peace. I knew I was at peace because this time when I looked out the window at that cold, dark night, it, it wasn't like that. It was beautiful. And the feeling that I had as I looked at it was I almost felt the night was sacred. And so I made the decision right then and there to approach the surgery with, with this peaceful attitude, simply by letting go of fearful thoughts in, in the way that I just described. And it worked. It worked amazingly. I have a question, because I think this is where I think individuals like yourself, you look at the concept that folks know that it's inside of them. They know that it's a thought. They have to stop percolating and nurturing that thought, because your book is also entitled The End of Stress, and then your subtitle says, Four Steps That Can Revive Your Brain. And I'm wondering, would you be able to share with us those four steps? Because, of course, our culture is that we're constantly looking for simple approaches to lifelong issues. But I'd love for you to share these four steps, because you did it, you grappled with the stuff. It was really the dark night of the soul. But what was that moment for you that shifted the way that you were going to believe how this was supposed to turn out for you? Yeah, well, the moment that was the, the shift point for me was that I found that when I didn't believe that thought, my experience changes to the experience I wanted to have and that it worked. And that once that it shifted to that experience I wanted to have, the world started looking different to me. I wasn't trapped by my problem anymore. I would begin to see solutions, and that's, that's what I wanted. And then what began to happen is my attitude towards the whole thing changed, and I was able to rally support to me, support from my family, support from my friends, and, and I discovered that I wasn't powerless when it came to fear and distress. And um, then when I studied the neuroscience, you know, the really good news that came out of neuroscience about 15 years ago was that you can rewire your brain. If, you, if fear and stress, anxiety, or problems in your life is because genetics and a painful past wired your brain for that, and you can rewire it. And it turns out that processes that rewire our brain are very simple, and they are processes that develop and strengthen our ability to be at peace with whatever's happening in the moment. And there are 12 tools in my book that develop that skill of busting stress reactions. And, you know, your, what happens is your brain cells create new networks when you practice a new skill. The point where the networks connect are called synapses, and the synapses actually get strengthened the more you use them. And especially if you use that synapse in a pattern fashion, like in a practice, 
like in a meditation practice, for example, that synapse gets even stronger. And then you don't need much effort to activate that stress-busting, that fear-busting pattern. It happens on its own. You know, your brain busts that stress, that fear, at the point it raises its ugly head. That's what I mean by the title of my book, The End of Stress. And the process that you go through, the four steps you're talking about, the first step is awareness, as in my story, you know, this step brings your stress pattern into greater awareness to slow down stress reactions to get you to choice, which is what step number two is about. Step number two is about learning, then practicing, and and finally sustaining a set of choices that build the mindset that changes your brain's autopilot from one that's, you know, activating those knee-jerk stress reactions, those fear reactions, to one that begins to amplify your intelligence, your heart, your optimism, your creativity. All of those things are literally our brain functions. And now your brain's in a position to help you tap your full potential as a human being, you know, to raise your IQ, to be more creative as you face problems in your life, to break through limits. Most of the limits that we face in life are mental limits, you know, we impose on ourselves. That's step three which is expanding brain power. And then step four is building your own individualized practice that's strengthening those synapses that continues to make your brain function better and better, begins to open your mind more, open your heart more, and and enable you to achieve what I call the good life, which is a life of being well and doing well on your way to flourishing. All of that's possible for Mm -hmm. every human being. Mm, I like the one especially on mental limits because on my path of meditation and Raj Yoga, the mental limits derive from repeating thoughts and and actions from a space of algae. It's an acronym I use every time. A for anger, L for lust, G for greed, A for attachment, and E for ego. And I found that that level of thinking tends to have me only see my skin and the skin of other people. And here I am, an embodied soul, with all of this potential and capacity, and then I put limits on this enormous power that I carry. And I remembered one day just thinking, it's like me stepping out of my car and pushing it, not realizing that I'm the master. I can just drive it and press a button and make it work, you know? It's just so incredible, these mental limits that we put on ourselves. It's painful. You have been doing incredible work in major corporations, and we're so privileged and glad that you're doing that because I know corporations are really struggling to get to the core of their own souls. There's an eight-week stress program that you've been offering. What are some of the results that you're seeing? And maybe just one or two things that you've seen are just a hit in your programs that you offer the corporations. Uh, Could you share just one or two of those things that are really hitting the nail on the head for those in that particular area? Sure. Uh, The reason that it's a, we do it an hour and a half a week over eight weeks to help people develop the practice. It actually takes four to eight weeks for your brain to, to make the changes. So we walk people through that period. And what we're achieving with this program, actually it's what neuroplasticity is achieving and mindfulness is achieving for people, is an average of a 40% reduction in their stress level, which is basically cutting their stress level in half initially. And 93% of the people are, expect that decline to continue as they get better and better at using the tools that they learn. But we also see increases in people's productivity, in their creativity, in the quality of their work, increases in their their satisfaction with their relationships at work, improvements in their relationship at home, and a um, large number of people uh, report that they feeling more energy, greater well-being. And all of those that I mentioned there are indicative of the higher brain function kicking in, of improvements in, in their overall brain function. And so it's been very rewarding to see the results. And we've, we've achieved these results in big Fortune 500 companies where the level of pressure is very, very high. And people really are interested. They're leaning for this kind of change in their life. They're tired of the stress. You know, I've done workshops all over the world, India, China, Saudi Arabia, Europe, and here in America, Japan. Everybody throughout the world has a response to it in the same way. They want less stress in their life. They want less stress at home. They want to be less afraid and anxious, and they jump at the opportunity to make a shift. And if we, if you do, if you, if your intention is clear, you will make the shift. Your brain will change to support you in bringing greater peace 
of satisfaction and expanding your horizon. Great. Thank you so much, Don. I think that's been so useful. I've enjoyed our conversation today, and before I let you go, is there a website that our friends can get a hold of you? Yes, you can go to ProAttitude, just pro and attitude, all one word, dot com. Mm, thank you so much, Don. All the very best, and thank you for making us less stressful.